everyone. My name is Ashton and I'm just trying to get it together. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about what you need to buy when you're getting a new puppy. So before we even get started, make sure that you do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Remember that I post three videos a week, whether they are every other day or have a couple days in between, whatever. There are three videos a week. I did actually post a video before that was titled, What to Expect When You're Expecting a Puppy. And I actually was wearing the same shirt. I wanted to wear this awesome $3 Walmart find before I had to retire it until the end of fall-ish time. So I really wanted to wear it. Don't hate me. It's not the same day. <laughs> So if you missed that video, I'll link it down below. So if it's that special time in your life to buy a puppy, you know that it's an exciting time. It's not something that you should take for granted. It's something that's gonna change your life, especially if it's your first dog. I find that it was a much more different experience getting a dog that was myself um, and my now husband. <laughs> it was myself and my now husband. Um, compared to a family pet. It 100% depends on you. You have to take care of it and you have to provide for this animal. And so it's just different all around. So whenever you get this animal, it's kind of daunting because it's a lot financially because one of the things that I said you need to expect is that it can be expensive. Especially whenever you account for things like medical bills, which whenever you get a dog, you have to take it to the vet. Before you even bring a dog home, you have to have certain things. So whenever the puppy or the, or maybe a dog, let's say you've adopted it at two years old, a year old, whatever have you, if you adopt a senior dog, which is amazing. Oh my gosh, I love senior dogs. Whenever you bring a dog home, they need to have certain things. And here are the things that I truly believe that you should have. Make sure that you do remember that the things that I'm telling you and all of these expenses that I'm telling you, you're like, oh gosh, this is expensive right here. Whenever you add all of this up, oh, I can't handle this. It's worth it. You cannot put a price tag on what a dog can give you. Animals, they give you more than you can ever give them. So that's important to remember whenever I'm listing all the things that you need to buy for them. All right, number one, and I'm not listing this in order of importance. I'm just kind of throwing it out there. Um, number one would be a crate. Um, my husband and I, we definitely think that crate training is very important because during the day we do have our dogs in a crate because we have differing dogs. <laughs> they are completely different. Between the three dogs that we have had together, we had two hounds that would have torn our house to pieces if we would have left them <laughs> unattended in our house. And then we have a Spencer who's a lab golden who would never tear up anything. However, we keep them in a crate during the day and they're fine with it. They take a nap, they're fine, they have food in there and they're good to go. They don't mind it whatsoever. Um, they also stay in the crate at night. Um, and they don't mind that whatsoever. They are in the bed with us while we are watching TV, getting ready for bed, and only whenever we're about to go to sleep is whenever we put them in the crate, and they're fine with it. I highly recommend that you purchase a crate. Now, um, between those dogs, we've purchased crates from PetSmart. I'll insert a picture. We've purchased crates from Petco, and it depends on the size of dog that you have for whatever size crate you want to buy. Um, we have two extra large crates because Jesse was an extra large dog. <laughs> and then we decided to get another extra large crate because whenever Jesse died and then Spencer moved into that one, he got used to how big it was, even though a large would probably be perfectly fine for him. Copper is now the size where he needs an extra large crate, so we now have two extra large crates. <laughs> However, you have to do what's best for you. Not everyone crate trains. Some people have their dogs sleep with them. Some people let their dogs roam. However, crate training is something that I do find 
is very good to fall back on, especially in those first few years while they're still a puppy and they're still getting out of some of those younger years, you can fall back on that crate. And then maybe whenever they're older, you can get them out of that and they can eventually roam the house. Some other things that are really good about these crates, there are these little trays that slide in there and you can repurchase those crates if something happened to them. Whenever Jesse died, Spencer, whenever, I think it was the first couple times that he was by himself, uh, one, one of those times he actually ripped up the entire bottom of his crate, which was one of those trays. We were able to replace it. Easy does it. What's really good about these kind of crates is you can get a really soft, cushy bed to just slide in that crate. Or what we prefer to do because the beds are hard to wash and our dogs are so big and they shed so much and they stink. <laughs> is we just get a crap ton of blankets and just put them in there <laughs> and we pull them out and we wash them and then we put them back in and boom. And especially whenever they're little and whenever they have accidents, you can just pull out their blankets, wash them, put them back in their crates and they're good to go. With a bed, that's a little different. Um, maybe whenever they get older, get them a bed. Whenever they stop chewing things up. Because I know Jesse ripped open a bed. I know Spencer did the same thing. Copper, we had just decided, we're just doing blankets. And we have like a bunch of blankets. So they have a very cushy surface to lay on. One thing that I recommend is if you have a Walmart near you, they have like these $2 or these blankets for like $2.50. We have like six or seven of those in each crate because... We want the dogs to be comfortable and we want to be able to pull them out and make it easy to clean. So it makes life a lot easier. They're comfy. They can move them around like Spencer. He'll push all the blankets to the front because he wants to lay on the hard surface of the bottom. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, Copper, he wants them all perfect or if they are a little ruffled, that's okay. He does not want to touch the bottom. <laughs> so whatever it gives them a little more freedom and you can fix their blankets however you can add more um but if you want to buy them a bed that's great as well it's however you want to do it all right you need a collar a leash a harness you need a bunch of different items there so as far as a collar goes you need to have a collar on your dog at all times for us we have a really bad habit of just if the collar doesn't if we give them a bath, we don't put the collar back on them. No big deal. We have a fence. We know our neighbors, whatever. They're microchip, whatever. It's a good habit of keeping your collar with their little license. I call it their license. I feel like that's off Lady and the Tramp. You know what I'm talking about? They're like, oh, it's my license. Um, but <laughs> with their little name and number on it, make sure you have your collar on your dog. <laughs> then make sure you have some sort of leash. Whether it's a long leash, a short leash, doesn't matter. Um, some people like the retractable ones. I personally don't um, because our dogs are so big and <laughs> they can pull really, really hard. So the retractable leashes just did not work really well for us. And as far as a harness goes, I like to have the dog wearing a collar and a harness, but have the leash hook up to the harness. Just the collar is like a safety measure just in case something happens to the harness. Harnesses are really good to make sure your dog doesn't get out of it because like with Copper, Copper is a bloodhound mix. And so the problem with being a bloodhound mix is that he has that thick, thick, thick neck, the bloodhound neck. But whatever he's mixed with doesn't have that huge bloodhound head. He's got the ears all day. But he doesn't have the big head. So it's kind of like a cone. It's like a cone shape. So it's like the thick neck and then it just gets skinnier. So the collar just, it slides right off of him. So whenever we took him to doggy daycare, he just slid right out of it and he got right into the parking lot and took off. So we went ahead and right after doggy daycare, after I had to bait him into the office and they were like, you need to make sure that he's on a leash at all times. I was like, 
I held it up. I was like, he got out. And they were like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to just bring him in there without something. He got out. Okay, he's a puppy still. He's big, but he's still a puppy. So we took him to the doggy supply store. We got him one of these easy walk harnesses. And basically what it does is instead of putting the pressure here on his neck, like unfortunately collars and some harnesses do, it puts the pressure right here. And so if he tries to pull, the pressure goes right here and he stops pulling. So make sure you get a really good harness. And the good thing about this, you can get these harnesses at, you can get them on Amazon or you can get them at basically any dog supply store. They are really good, they're easy to put on, love it. All right, the next thing that you need to make sure that you have is lots of toys because yes, you want to make sure that they have a million toys because you love them and you want them to love your home, of course. However, you want them to chew the toys, not your shoes, not the wall, like Jesse did. <laughs> not the wall, <laughs> not the carpet, not your table, not the chair, not whatever, not the other dog. You want them to chew the toy. You want to be able to redirect them to other toys because they're going to destroy those toys. You're going to spend money on toys, and I mean a lot of money. TJ Maxx, Marshalls, even Home Goods are really, really good places to get toys, by the way. PetSmart has these really good bones. They're about this big and this tall. You can get some that are hollow or they're filled with like peanut butter or cheese. They are hard bones. They're, they're bones, but they are virtually indestructible. Jesse could destroy any toy, any toy. It would say, <laughs> heavy chewer approved. He destroyed it in five minutes, more or less, always. Um, but these are different. They're in the rawhide section, but they're not rawhide. Not at all. Um, but they're really, really good. You need to have toys that your dogs cannot or you need to have a lot of options. Because first of all, make sure your shoes are put up. I learned this the hard way, Jesse. <laughs> make sure things that you don't want chewed up are put up while they're puppies at least. Make sure that there are plenty of options for them to chew because they will chew that. And if you see them with something in their mouth, take it out and put a toy in their mouth so they know what to chew. All right, make sure that you have dog food. Make sure to consult your veterinarian and make sure that what you're feeding them is good to go because we've been feeding, first of all, we started out Jesse and then Spencer with Purina dog or Purina puppy chow and it worked out great. And then whenever we got copper, he had worms unfortunately because uh, he was a stray and that was fairly normal. They said put him on a really good food. So we went to PetSmart and we got something. Turns out it had too many grains. So he was pooping too much. And so eventually we put him on Purina Puppy Chow. He was just fine. We asked the vet. This was fine. Everything was good to go. So whatever you do, make sure you ask your vet to make sure the dog food that you're feeding them is good to go. Something your dog is going to love. Make sure you have plenty of treats. Okay. <laughs> Make sure you have plenty of what's called training treats. These would be like smaller treats. Also depends on your dog's size. But even if you have a big dog, make sure that you have training treats because training treats are very small. Whenever you're teaching them to sit, lay down, whatever you're teaching them, stay, you want to be able to reward them for very little things and reward them often because you're going to want to train them in very small bouts. You can't train them for 30 minutes at a time. You have to train them for five, like for five minutes at a time maybe 10, but I would always train Jesse, Spencer, and Copper for five minutes at a time because they their attention span is very short. You can't train them for very long. So you have to be able to give them very small treats at a time. So make sure you have training treats. So it's like sit, oh, you did a good job. Sit, good boy, sit, sit, sit. Whenever they get bigger, I always give my dogs the Alpo Snaps, which is what they have at my doggy daycare. They love those. We give them the pig ear and cow ears. Um, those are at the dog supply store. They love those. 
Um, Purina has the Busy Bones. They're rawhide free. Those are really good. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't give those to a puppy. That's whenever they get older. And that'd be for a bigger dog. They have the minis too. They have minis. Pee pads are something else that if you want to use those, I'm not well versed because we never use them. Um, but pee pads are something that you may want to invest in. Um, some people use them in the crate. Some people use them by the door. Uh, but that's not something that we ever used. Here's a big one. Whenever we had Jesse in our apartment, <laughs> we were going up and down the stairs when we first had him about 10 times a day. And that is no joke. If you've had a puppy, you know they have to go out to pee probably 10 times a day. It's a lot. If I had to estimate, it's a lot. And three flights of stairs is a lot. So we knew that we wanted to get out of our apartment quickly. And whenever we did, we got to our house. It did not have a fence, but we got our house. And one of the first things that we did, we called the fence builders nearest to us. We got our quote. And within months, because there was a snowstorm and whatever, uh, snowstorm in North Carolina, there was snow. <laughs> we got our fence put in and oh my God. It was the best investment ever because if my dogs drive me nuts, I open that door and I let them go. I say, go, go, just go. And they run, 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 and all is well. They have water. They're good to go. There are plenty of things to sniff. They can run. They have toys outside. They are so happy. Even neighbors that love us and love them that they can bark at and they'll say, hey Copper, hey Spencer. Like no joke. They love them. Love them. <laughs> like when Jesse died, they brought us flowers. They brought us food that good of neighbors. They love us. <laughs> if you have a puppy that you know is gonna grow up to be a big dog that needs to stretch its legs, a fence, if you can afford it, is worth your money. It is worth every penny. Coming from someone who does not have a lot of money, okay? Now, if you have a small dog, that's a little different. They don't have to have a too, too, too much room to run. But if you have a dog like Jesse was over a hundred pounds who needs to run and even Copper who's 70, Spencer who's 65, they need to run and get their energy out. A fence is worth every penny. And this is kind of a little extra tidbit. Make sure you have plenty of things to clean your floor with. For us, it was carpet cleaner. <laughs> your dogs are gonna pee on the floor. So if you have hardwoods, have something to clean that. For us, it was carpet cleaner. Make sure you have plenty of it. <laughs> and remember, they are going to tear stuff up. That's what they do. They are puppies. They are trying to get used to the world. They're trying to get used to you. It's frustrating, okay? Oh my gosh. We had Jesse in an apartment. We were trying to get our security deposit back because, hello, money is money. So we were frustrated on top of bringing him down and up the three flights of stairs. It was a lot. Add house hunting on top of that. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> so I get it. It's frustrating. But remember, they are puppies. It, they're trying to get used to you. You're trying to get used to them. It's an adjustment process. You'll get through it. It's fine. They're going to change your life for the better. They're amazing. You're going to love every minute of it. Most every minute of it. They'll drive you crazy. But you're going to love it. It's going to be great. All right, everyone. So that's it for today's video comments below if you've ever had a puppy and what your experience was. Let me know if you're getting a puppy and tell me all about your what you're gonna get if you're rescuing. If you're not rescuing, tell me what kind of breed you're gonna get. Just tell me all about it. I love dogs. I'm obsessed with dogs. If you're getting a cat, let me know. If you're getting a hamster, don't let me know if you get a snake because I'm scared. 
I'm sorry. I love all of God's creatures, but I'm scared of snakes, okay? Um, but let me know in the comments below what you're gonna get or what you have. I'm so excited. That's all for today's video. See y'all next time. I have a hair. Wow, I got it on the first try. That's the first time ever. Wow.